Hello, welcome back to Ivy Grove. My name is Nick and I am here with Mr. Dave Snell and we are here in his amazing, uh, lovely guitar workshop. Dave, can you tell uh, the viewers how this all started? Uh, yeah, uh, hi Nick. Thanks. Hello. Welcome to my workshop here. Um, how did it start? kind of started uh, a couple of years ago. My wife and I, Maggie, we sold our business and retired whatever that means don't like that word but mm -hmm. um uh, being a creative uh, i just wanted to do something creative and uh, i sort of had a hankering for a few years to to try and build guitars mm -hmm. so i spent the last kind of year of uh, before we sold accumulating lots of tools and building this workshop and then just jumped in really and mm -hmm. built a guitar <laughs> and that's how it started. Have you always have you always wanted? Have you always wanted to build your own no, guitar? No, no, not at all. No, I um, guitars for me. I mean, I've played since I was like 11, 12 years old. Mm. But guitars were always just a, a tool, a vehicle to write songs, um, to play in bands. I don't, I didn't really know anything about guitars, even mm. though I was playing it for decades. Um, and it was only in the last probably ten years that. Um, that I've got more interested in the guitar as a you know yeah. a, an instrument itself. Amazing. So I mean, was there any inspiration about you know giving you this, or, or who would you say inspired you, or what inspired you to to do it? Yeah, uh, a few people. Um, I mean, my son Tom, who's a great guitarist, uh, he he probably inspired me to get back into playing electric guitar. And also, I mean, he's just so knowledgeable about them. You know, he knows, uh, he knows all the pickups and all the hardware and all the names and and, and why things do this, that, and the other. And I, uh, I had no idea what he was talking about half the time. But um, but he kind of inspired me to. Um, you know, it kind of grew a love in me, I think, for the instrument. Yeah. Um, which uh, you know it was great to get from your son, since I probably taught him how to play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 25 years ago. So. Yeah, and I know that you own um, several very lovely guitars yourself. Uh, out of the guitars that you you've owned or you've collected or you bought over the years, is there one that stands out? Is have you got one favourite that you can share with people? Yeah, yeah, I had to kind of think hard about this one, mm -hmm. uh, but it's uh, I've got it here. It's um, shall I show it to you? It's yeah, if you show it to people. So, uh, this is it's very uh, very nice. This is a 1979 uh, Fender Stratocaster, and you'll see on the top it's got anniversary, which uh, in 1979, it was the 25th anniversary of, uh, of the Stratocaster uh, being made. And so they brought this out to commemorate that. Wow. And I bought this brand new in Guildford. Yeah, I had a, a job in a band, yeah. but I didn't have any money. So my brother actually, um, gave me some money to buy to buy this, and and I love this because of the journey it's been on. Really, mm. all around South of England, did some big gigs. Albert Hall, um, Westminster Central Hall. We did ten nights there. Nice. Um, so you know this was played in front of thousands of people over um, 19 to 80, 81. I used it continuously then for a while in in various bands, and then I sold it. And I part exchanged it, it right. and I, you know, why did I do that? I've got no <laughs> idea, because it weighs a ton and you think that, um, that, you think that there's pause heavy. <laughs> For a strap, that is seriously it's probably wrong. Probably twice the weight. Yeah, people get close to look at it here. It's an amazing colour on that, isn't it? It is, it was started silver. They go a bit sort of goldy colour over the years, and that's just it's started. Lovely, I love that. The black scratch plate there as well. What what is the what is it so heavy? What wood? It, what's it made? From? Uh, swamp ash. Swamp ash. Wow. That's what I was told. <laughs> it made a swamp, swamp ash. <laughs> and swamp so ash. So they just dug out some ash I, trees from I, the bottom of a swamp. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess. And I guess they're just heavier. They're just a small, you know, uh, solid. They must ash. sound amazing as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's got nice. It's got very kind of typical seventies, eighties sort of strat tone to it. I think we'll have to do actually. I have to do a, another video. <laughs> just with some of days and actually playing them so you can actually hear them we'll set it all up so yeah, yeah, we, can, yeah. we can play them you can hear how they sound yeah, yeah. But did you have to do a course like how did you learn like how did you learn to build them 
Well, my my background is uh, picture framing, which is t totally unrelated, but I'd worked to very fine tolerances. I'd worked with wood mm -hmm. and I'd run a workshop for the best part of 40 years. Right. So I was familiar with uh, with tools and, and, you know, just sort of like doing things well, which I always loved doing things yeah. properly. Yeah. Um, but guitars were a different kettle of fish and I, I really didn't think I could build a guitar. I thought I could build a guitar body, but the thought of building a guitar neck with all of the intricacies of, you know, wood and metal and frets and spacing and everything was, uh, I thought that's beyond me. Right. But I was inspired by a couple of builders, uh, Tom Gray, who owns Gray's Guitars in London mm -hmm. and uh, is a small um, independent guitar builder. Yeah. Um, and Ben Crow, who runs Crimson Guitars down right. in the West Country. Yeah. Um, now, Ben does an enormous amount of YouTube Mm. videos on tutorials and cool. he not only sells guitars and right. builds guitars and has yeah. a guitar building school um, but he loves giving information away he loves yeah he loves to teach so uh, it was basically the university of youtube that's, that's how i learned what you can learn on youtube oh, eh? what you can learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hit that subscribe button <laughs> um, and how many since you started it um, how many guitars have you built I uh, I've built completely. I've built one, two, four, really. Okay. One's almost finished. Yeah. Uh, and I'm in the process of building the fifth guitar. Amazing. So we've got four of them here actually today, which is. And can you could you show us what was the first one that you built? Yeah, sure. Yeah, this was the this was number one. Well, this is number one. So, so this, this is my dad guitars. This is my dad guitars. Official number, number one. one of the yep. workshop. It's people. got a serial number on the back. Has it actually got a it's name, or is it just called number one? This is just number one. Number yeah. one. Names come later, but, <laughs> uh, but this is this is number yeah, so one. Look, I mean, hold that up closer, Dave. To yeah, look, sure. Look, look at that colour. That is yeah. unbelievable. And you can see this is a uh, a piece of uh, sycamore, and sycamore has just it's full of flaws basically mm. but it's got some lovely just the uh, detail in that grain is like yeah the flame green. that you get in it uh, which is what i love about sycamore because it's not perfect and to me it looks a little bit like a telly sort of in the, in its shape yeah it's a telly it's a telly design um, yeah. they, they say make your first guitar a telly because it's the easiest guitar okay. to build right before you 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 know did you plan it out say right i'm gonna have you know that kind of neck those kind of in the, you know that kind of headstock did you yeah. or did that sort of was it part of the process did you do, no, I, did you do a bit and then yeah i did a bit of planning i i like the idea of, of the headstock being uh three and three rather than yeah six in a line i've mm -hmm. changed that now this is any guitar i've made with a headstock like this okay um i had this idea of a logo that um uh which is the thing about guitar builders their headstocks all have to look different. That's the kind of signature. That's bit. what stands out, that's right? What stands out. Yeah. So I wanted to do something different, um, and that's what I came up with. If you can it's see lovely, that, yeah. it's a sort of scalloped, mm. um, which I've managed to carry through to the other, uh, the other headstock design. Um, but I made a few mistakes, some serious ones, like on the back there. I drilled right through the back of the neck. Uh, <laughs> you went. I'm not even sure the camera can pick this up, but I'm, is it that? But then Nick can see there. There's a. I'll do a close up. Yeah. That sense. There's a little. Um, I can see that. So I had to make something to make to put that right. So I just carved and a bit the, of wood. And what, what's the neck? Uh, the neck is ash. Yeah. This piece of ash came from a neighbour whose <laughs> dad <laughs> collects <That's> wood. <laughs> yeah, and he said, "Oh, I'm seeing my dad next week. Would you like me to get some wood?" And he got me several lumps of ash, which is very kind of him. Um, cost me a bottle of wine, I think. Uh, That's not bad. Is it? And ash <laughs> isn't a standard wood for a neck, but I've made four necks out of this ash, and they've all been pretty amazing, actually. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Not, well, we've got plenty of ash trees around, haven't we? We have, yeah. Yeah, and I've got some ash here from my, uh, which came out of my son's garden, which I'm hoping one day will become necks. Nice. So, you know. And, to, and what pick are they? P90s on there? Yeah, they're P90s. They're. Um, um, made for that company down in 
uh, bare knuckle pickups. Nice. They were down in Cornwall. Yeah. Uh, British company, handmade. And the tremolo? Tremolo is a Duesenberg tremolo. Uh, Duesenberg, in my opinion, make the best tremolos. Um, sorry, Bixby, but these just mm. uh, beautifully soft and smooth. Yeah. And um, so I always wanted, I, I have a Duesenberg, so I knew the tremolos. Yeah, they're that. very good. Yeah, they're solid, good. aren't they? Uh, it's got Amazing. a, a shaler roller bridge there, so the strings kind of roll backwards and forwards with the tremolo, which is nice. Um, and then you've got just a simple, is that yeah. volume and tone? Just Correct, yes, yeah. yes, volume and tone, and then the selector switch at the selector, top. Selector, yeah. So in this sort of Gibson style. Nice. So you get, uh, you know, you can get bridge, neck, or, uh, or a combination of both. Lovely. So very simple, good way to start. And um, I was amazed the moment I plugged it in, and it just sounded awesome. And you made I was not yeah. expecting that. <laughs> uh, well, so, it's well made. Well, you know? I don't know. I think, you know. And a lot of time, an awful lot of time and attention has gone into it, as you can see. Yeah, there's a few numbers that you just have to get right. You know, all your spacing has to be correct. And the, the bit between the nut here and the bridge here, yep. if that's wrong, it's always going to be wrong. So, so if people out here are watching this video, mm. um, if they, want to find you where, where can they find you well you know nick or you just there's a strange the question it works because <laughs> <laughs> do i want it to be a business oh i've agonized over this I, right i love making them and i i've made two guitars for other people now mm. and i love doing that um but they are babies and when they mm. you know when they're done and you kind of have to give them away it's um, it's quite <laughs> it's difficult like it's very hard to let go of <laughs> it, it is yeah <laughs> so do i want it to be a business i mean I, I was in business for nearly 40 years and i don't really want to be in business but i will happily make you know if somebody wants a, a very personal custom guitar made for them yeah. to a spec that you know they can dictate and leave me to do some of the design and the aesthetics and yeah. the ideas then I'm in for that and that if they is. don't mind waiting waiting a year for me to make it you know because <laughs> that's, what they, that's it, what's nice about it, it takes a while pressure no me. deadline I've had 40 years of deadline so <laughs> I'm... okay well thank you so much for joining us and I mean the very last question Dave is yeah. Who who is your favourite all time guitarist and oh, why? Well, if we leave aside John Mayer, oh yeah, because he's still he's pretty good. Kid on he's, the rock. he's quite good, isn't he? And my son Tom, who actually is a bit of a guitar legend in my eyes. I think probably Mark Knopfler is mm. my favourite guitarist from Dire Straits. Yeah, and I, I love Mark's uh, technique. I've always been an, an admirer. That's probably why I enjoy playing the Strat more mm. than any other guitar. And I desperately want to sound like him, but I'm desperately always trying not to sound like him. <laughs> if you know what I mean? You know, yeah. You know, but I just love his musicality and the way he plays. He plays. He, he plays similar to the way I play, actually. But, uh, and I love the fact that I read a couple of years ago that he was having guitar lessons. I mean. Yeah. You know, well, that's the thing. Is like to say, we're always, you know, never, always never stop learning. Every day's a school day. Every day's a school nice. day. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. And yeah, well, hopefully we'll see you again and we'll get to play some of these guitars as well. Great, yeah, love Thanks, that. Thanks, Dave. Okay, Nick, thank you.